Hey, welcome to this Windows channel, and here it is, a new build today. Finally, we had a little wait for a build because there was um, apparently a major bug that prevented the release of a new build to the uh, insiders. So build, uh, as you see on the bottom right, I've got Windows 10 Pro Insider Preview, and it's the evaluation copy build 14.328. And so this is the latest build. It has a number of new features, and it's uh, really, really nice. Install went super well. Uh, since they have that new install screen, for some reason I have the impression that the install is actually better and works better than it did. So that's pretty cool for that. So um, that's the interesting thing for sure. So uh, what's new in this insider preview, of course, um, in the build? They were talking about uh, Windows Ink and that uh, that would come to uh, Windows. So Windows Ink is now available um, in this build. So basically, um, if you have a Surface Pro, Surface Book-like device, you, uh, you can uh, use, for example, the Sketchpad app. Uh, so there's a lot of things that happen. And of course, it's with uh, the pen. So you need to have the pen. Uh, for this to work, but it's uh, pretty much uh, in full swing now. In other little things, start improvements. If you look at the bottom left, uh, new start menu, look at this. It now opens automatically with the alphabetical list of apps with most used at the top, the buttons on the left side, uh, reworked start menu basically. I actually like that and uh, I really find it really cool. So I uh, really update it for a much more consistent um, work and also across the tablet and versus uh, PC desktop type uh, working. So uh, all apps list merge into a single view on the left side. Um, really nice. Power settings, file explorer also available right here on the left side. Don't have to go into notifications necessarily. Uh, that's really nice. Uh, some tablet mode improvements. So if you are using a tablet, uh, it uses, actually takes more advantage or better advantage of the use basically of uh, the, the, the screen basically. So when you're in tablet mode, it actually has a better use of the screen and it does show and it works better. And you know what? It kind of resembles a little more Windows 8 uh, than it used to and of course on the left side with the icons and everything is there quite uh, easy to access basically uh, really nice so tablet mode also improved in here and uh, you know these are all the different options that pretty much everybody wanted and asked for that are happening right now uh, Cortana is available from the lock screen. So now you can use Cortana without having to unlock when you're in the lock screen. Of course, still the beautiful lock screen that basically merges your um, background picture and lock screen together. It's uh, seamless. It seems like everything's locked in together. Very beautiful effect. Unfortunately, I can't show you because if I go to the lock screen, the video recorder will not show you that. Uh, pretty cool. Um, there's also um, a set of reminders for photo reminders uh, via share, contract, uh, and universal Windows apps. Uh, the cross-device functionality, like your phone's battery life displayed on the PC. So if you have a Windows phone, an Android phone, Cortana available, battery life of your phone is showing on your Windows PC, which is pretty cool. Cortana can now search OneDrive for files. So when you search for Cortana, not only will it uh, search for the files on your PC, it will also tell you, hey, on OneDrive, you got that also, which is a nice addition uh, because it can, um, you know, sometimes they're not sure. It can actually um, really improve upon this for sure. Icon of the Action Center is moved completely to the right, as you see here on the bottom right. So uh, the moving to the far right of the taskbar uh, so it's not buried with the other icons. I think that's a good move 
because you have to you know go through the regular icons and say hmm, where's the notifications or the action center stuff so uh, pretty pretty nice also groups of notifications here you see there are all lines so depending on notifications so for example if you have mail notifications they'll be in a group if you have um, here I got feedback up notification there's a group settings another one has a group that means each group has its own notifications instead of having a mishmash of all the notifications got together mixed up this I think is a great great idea also uh, pretty nice and uh, you uh, can now fully customize a quick actions area uh, and an improvement in Wi-Fi quick action now displays a view um, available networks fly out instead of stupidly just toggling Wi-Fi on and off uh, which is nice basically so this is really really uh, cool that's for sure um, basically other improvements that you might have taskbar improvements the clock in the taskbar now is, uh, is now integrated with the calendar accounts you configured with uh, Outlook calendar so uh, basically uh, you can see all your coming events with one click when you select an event in this new flyout the event opens in the calendar app so basically you've got some new features here and it tells you your calendar stuff here at the bottom this is pretty cool also quick access to your calendar stuff very very easy to do uh, taskbar settings are now available in the settings app instead of the old school floating properties window so basically in the settings you now have a lot of stuff for the taskbar itself uh, volume flyout has been updated to let you um, to switch between multiple all audio devices also so this is uh, pretty cool and uh, so you can actually click and you have uh, all the available devices there which is pretty nice um, quick and easy access to whatever device you want to have in the audio department I think that's really really nice for sure uh, there are some improvements in the settings app so um, all the pages of the settings now have their own icons associated with them in keeping with a recent change to mobile so basically uh, everything that you uh, you do in the settings have different icons that will be associated with each item uh, so you see here look at all the little icons that are available next to each feature of the different settings so they will all have different icons now uh, instead of just having you know information they'll have an icon that will display so you can easily by icon view for example see um, what you have another thing is an app reset feature that lets you fix broken apps so um, that is something that a lot of people wanted to have uh, when you had broken apps basically you could not do anything about it it was kinda complicated to do anything about it but now you have um, a reset possibility on an app so uh, there's a lot of stuff that's new in uh, in this thing and it's pretty pretty nice um, I'm trying to find one I saw one app that had uh, a fixing uh, thing and um, just lost it but uh, really cool new stuff that's for sure um, there's a app reset basically it's uh, really called app reset so um, really a lot of stuff here let's uh, check the default apps um, yeah lots these are the default stuff um, so you know there's an app reset <laughs> I'm trying to find it I saw it not you know long ago app reset Let's just check. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, I, I just can't find it anymore. But there's an app reset uh, that you can do. Uh, as you see here, also, even the search has changed. So a lot of the stuff um, are uh, changed here also um, in the way that you know the search will show up when you do something. Uh, there's virtual desktop improvements so if you are using um, precision touchpad uh, Windows 10 will now support a four-finger swipe left or right 
to switch between virtual desktops. So the virtual desktops are these little desktops that you actually create by going here at the bottom and a four button or four finger swipe on the pad will work. Now of course you need to have a compatible pad for that uh, for sure. Lock screen improvements, privacy region, the lock screen no longer displays your email address. Uh, so you know before you'd log in it would give you the email you use for your uh, account. Now that is not showing anymore. But if you want you can activate it and still have it there. Uh, it's kind of for a privacy uh, thing and I think it's not a bad thing. Uh, there are media controls that appear at the bottom right of the lock screen now. Uh, so including album heart when you're listening for example to some music. So this is pretty cool. There's a change in user credentials. Uh, the uh, user account uh, credentials now has a dialogue will appear when you enter and uh, your user credentials. It's been kind of restyled and um, it's going to say well this would you want this app to make uh, changes to your PC it's it shows more details about what's going to happen instead of hey I want to change something are you okay it's okay this app wants to change something are you okay with it it's kind of a little better that's for sure Skype universal windows platform app improvements uh, all new in one messaging app picks up group audio and video calls a little bit like FaceTime if you want File Explorer improvements. So in the File Explorer, let's just bring it up. File Explorer. So if we bring up the File Explorer, um, well, File Explorer is uh, isn't actually changing yet, but it picks up a new uh, icon in this build, aligns with the monochrome design language used for icons across Windows 10. Uh, it's you know they're they're still working around the uh, the different options here and trying to to bring this into uh, a better function um, view basically. Uh, the file explorer icon no longer pinned to the taskbar by default, so you see it's not it's missing from the bottom taskbar, uh, but you can of course change that and bring it back, which I would do because I use this all the time. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, a few more improvements, that's for sure. But that are in, you know, kind of uh, there's Japanese uh, stuff that are improved and so on. Uh, but you know, it's a, a great build. Li lots of nice little features to look for, uh, and uh, I think it's worth it to uh, check it out. That's for sure. And um, of course. That also means that there's uh, some problems with this build also. Microsoft does state a lot of uh, the problems in build 14.3.2.8. It's very stable. You know what? Um, it's just very, very uh, amazing at how uh, these builds are extremely, extremely um, stable and um, I'm impressed by that. Uh, I think it's showing how you know we're getting close to the uh, official release you know this summer and uh, it's showing how, how, how good this these builds are now and uh, you know it's actually reassuring because there were so many problems with the builds in the past few weeks. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, known issues after upgrading to this build there may be some cases when your PC enters connected standby uh, might have a blue screen so uh, bug check continuing to make changes to extension data store uh, Shima in Microsoft Edge so after updating to this build any extensions installed will be removed you have to reinstall them feedback up uh, is not localized uh, to uh, and will be in English US only uh, no localized for each country or language. Um, feedback up takes about 20-30 minutes after updating to this build to download and uh, hydrate itself. So if you're not seeing anything yet in the feedback up, it takes a little while. Uh, desktop app converter preview. Project Centennial will fail to run. That's very important. Uh, what else of the um, the stuff that could be a problem? Playing music and groove music within two minutes after logging into your PC will result in a playback error. 
Microsoft Edge, some large downloads may appear to get stuck 99%. That was also in the last build. Uh, so lots of little thing. If you have BitLocker device encryption enabled, try to go back to a previous Insider Preview. Um, the Apple crash, so it's not going to work. And so um, if you upgraded from 14.3.1.6, you may see stuck apps in the store. I've upgraded from 14.3.1.6, so that could be a problem for me. You may see square boxes in certain apps when using some of the new emojis. Uh, they're still getting things set up, so that's why. Settings will crash if you try to pin one of the pages to start, resulting in page not being pinned. So these are a few things that are buggy. But overall, an amazing, an amazing build. So if you want to get it, very stable. I think it's worth getting it. Very, very nice. I've seen somewhere that uh, apparently it would be available in the slow ring also. So that means if you're in the slow ring, it's a worthy enough uh, build that they think everybody should have it. If you have any comments, questions, oh, by the way, one last thing. As in build 316, my Cortana isn't working. I am unable to, I can search, but I can't use Cortana. So um, that was also the fact in the last build for me. But apart from that, everything is pretty good. If you enjoyed my videos, please subscribe. Give us thumbs up if you like the videos. And hopefully, you uh, will continue following us on the channel. Um, please subscribe. Lots of videos on this channel, so you'll know when new videos are online. Enjoy your new build. And, of course, if other new information comes around, I'll be posting and talking about it.